I'd like to introduce the ideas for this module on integral equations, where we'll be looking at a more black box approach to what's going on in some of our fluid motions. We've already looked at situations where we've examined static fluids, and when nothing much interesting was going on, when there was no motion, we found that differences in pressure depended entirely on differences in elevation. So that the deeper we went under the surface of the water, the higher the pressure was. That wasn't very interesting because it involved no fluid motion. Next, we had a look at Navier-Stokes equations and the continuity equation. And we looked in detail at what was going on in more complex flows and found that that was fairly difficult to keep track of. So for example, if we had a flow coming in here, we might be able to figure out not only that there was flow, but that it had a distribution of velocities. Faster in the center and slower going down to zero out at the outer edge with the no slip condition. On the outlet, we might have a more skewed distribution of velocities, something like this, depending on the configuration of what was going on inside. And we would, if we applied the Navier-Stokes equations, be able to find out exactly what was going on all the way through this region of interest. So that we would know the velocity field as a function of x, y, z, and time. We would know the pressure field as a function of x, y, z, and time. And overall, I think we might find that the flow was moving this way, going from the inlet towards the outlet. And we would see a fair bit of rotational motion in here. I'm not sure of the details because I haven't done the Navier-Stokes solution. But we could find the details of that flow by examining a whole lot of little control volumes, a whole lot of differential volumes within the space, and applying the Navier-Stokes differential equations. That's a fairly complex process. It's difficult. And in all but the simplest situations, it really requires that we use computational fluid dynamics to get all of that detail. What if we could ignore the details of what was happening inside there and treat it instead just as a black box, like this one? I don't really need to know what's going on inside. What I'd really like to know is how big a force, for example, does it take to hold that box in place? This fluid is turning a corner here it's being decelerated in the x-direction and accelerated downwards in the y-direction. That's going to require a force to push this way and push that way to change the direction of the fluid because momentum is conserved. That momentum conservation is built into the Navier-Stokes equations. It's what they're all about in fine detail in here. What if we could look at the whole system in not so fine detail and just know that there's flow coming in and flow coming out. I can still look at this and say that there must be some force applied to the fluid as it passes through that control volume in order to cause it to turn that corner. If I'm interested in making a practical estimate, I could take this black box approach and see if that would tell me at least what the forces are, even if it didn't tell me the details of what was happening over here. So I'll get information out that's useful, but missing details. Well, what can I say about what's going on over here? The force is not equal to zero because the direction changes. Mass is also conserved.
and we pick that up with the continuity equation over here, we're going to have to pick all of that up over here as well. F is still going to equal MA in a large integral sense. And if I was looking here for a mass conservation principle, I might say that, well, the first approximation would be that whatever's coming in, there must be an equal amount coming out over here. So if the volume flow rate in was equal to the volume flow rate out, that's one way of conserving mass. That would be true if the flow was steady so that I wasn't building up or taking away any of the total amount of mass in the black box. And it would also require that the uh, density be constant. Because if I want the volume flow rate and the volume flow rate out to match, then they would both have to be the same density for conservation of mass. In addition, what else can I say? Well, energy is going to be conserved. Energy conservation shows up in our Navier-Stokes differential equation solution. It also shows up over here through Bernoulli's equation. The energy that the flow has coming in must be equal to the energy the flow has coming out. That would lead me in the simplest sense to have the velocity in must be equal to the velocity out. Otherwise the kinetic energy of the fluid would have changed. So that's going to require assumptions that I've got no friction and no work done. Which again is going to leave out some of the details and allow me to make some practical estimates that are not covering all of the uh, elements that show up in the computational fluid dynamic solution. So in this module, we're going to focus on black boxes like this, where we've integrated the relationships that we had in the CFD or, or in the Navier-Stokes uh, equations over a larger region to get some fundamental conservation principles that are going to leave out some of the details and allow us to make some practical estimates. It's really useful to be able to make a practical estimate quickly and easily in pencil and paper calculations when it would take much longer and be much more difficult and involved to get all of these details which probably we don't really need if what we really want to know is how strong do the uh, uh, supports have to be to support this force which is necessary to allow that change in flow velocity through this box. So with integral equations, we're going to be able to make practical estimates that are useful but not containing all of the details that we would get from a much more complex solution of the Navier-Stokes equations. And that's a very practical, useful capability in mechanical engineering.